Hello friends, this is Larry with Rides Done Right, and we're doing a rider profile with Ryan Sutton today. Ryan, nice to see you. How are you doing, Larry? I'm doing good. The Chromie, the Chromester. <laughs> so I, we're going to go back to the beginning, and uh, since we're doing a profile, I want to hear about uh, how did you first get into motorcycles? Very beginning, when did you get your first bike? Uh, my mom uh, grew up racing motocross with my grandpa, and my grandpa actually kind of mentioned to my mom and dad that uh, maybe they, it would be something that I would be interested in. Um, my neighbor, when I the, when we moved up to Smoky Point, Washington, um, was a prof an ex professional AMA motocross racer, and he moved into uh, next door to my parents' house when I was six years old, seven years old, and uh, he in turn as soon as he moved in he got a dozer he was a heavy equipment mechanic he went out and built a five acre motocross track in our backyard and uh the guy absolutely took a love you know a liking to me right away um would let me help out at his house and and, and work on the track and help out around there and they had four wheelers and stuff so i'd go out on the four wheelers and do all that and then my grandpa came out and was talking to my neighbor steve at the time and and uh Steve goes, man, that kid's got talent already, you know, and my grandpa goes, I know, we should get him on a bike, and so then my eighth birthday was uh, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, um, uh, they, they got me a little uh, 1972 75cc uh, Suzuki, and I beat the crap out of that thing for like two years, no suspension, barely ran, you know, and, and uh and then uh, we stepped up from there and, and, and just kept progressing. And my neighbor at the time, my parents couldn't afford to race. Um, we didn't know what racing was. We just rode. And, and so fortunately, we had my neighbor Steve, and, and he was able to be like, hey, I'll take you take you to your first race or your first you know track day practice for motocross. And, and so that's what we did. We started right there, and we never looked back and just been doing it since. And you, of course, you had a track in your backyard, so you went to a motocross event already knowing how to jump and doing that kind of kinda. stuff so you had kind of <laughs> um i was i was about as green as you could be in motocross when i went to um tenino mud slingers in olympia um we had a track in our backyard built that year but it was muddy it was the off season so it was crappy weather the whole time so we didn't really get to ride the new tracks so much with the big jumps we had plenty of acreage to rip but nothing to, to really learn to jump on so um, showing up at Tenino Raceways um, they had this I don't know if you you've driven past there in Olympia the, the big ski jump on the side of I-5 oh yeah oh yeah anyway so that was the biggest thing to me I was so intimidated when I pulled in there I was like oh my god look at this thing you know and I ended up crashing and breaking my thumb on it that weekend and, and uh, now, it was a, and it's a typical like ski jump like it goes up yeah, and then points yeah, it goes up and the drops down and with a big long landing so you can really jump out there my and, experience the first time I ever hit one was on the out lap and I didn't walk the track first and so I didn't understand why everybody lifted they lifted and I just thought man I'm gonna show those dudes yep. and I planted it and shot off and then it of course we know what happens yep. Yep. you're out in the great abyss yep. so that's where I started um, I, I traveled around with uh, Steve Corcoran for three four years and uh, then my dad kind of started to take a liking to it and realized that we could kind of do this as a family thing and and go travel and see some stuff and 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 take me racing you know? and was he racing too or was he just enjoying nope, being just able to come with you and watch come with me and watch and teach me and watch me excel and how long before you won your first race ah uh, let's see i think i won 80 beginner um my fourth race or so out at at tonino mudslingers there and it's called Mud Slingers for a reason. They run it. They start in November and they run all the way through like uh, February, and it is the worst conditions ever. My the first race I won, there was probably 16 inches of standing mud on the track, you know, and we had no feet on the bike the whole time, rah, clutching through the mud, and <laughs> it was awesome, you know. And that's the days that I really still think about, you know. This it's funny because this it it starts to lay the foundation and explain a lot about how you are so good because there's there's the foundation of of what you what you learned on so how long did you do motocross and when did you first get a taste of of street so i raced motocross up until i was like 17. um i started i, I went up from junior to intermediate um, bumped up from 80 super mini to 125 intermediate was going to do the AMA Nationals as my first pro race at Washougal and had some injuries and some life issues and just as a growing up kid and doing stupid things and getting in trouble with mom and dad and so it all just kind of came to an abrupt end for me with racing and and me and my dad kind of had a falling out and I went my own way and they did their own thing and 
and uh, I eventually I just kind of was like okay well I guess I'm done racing and um, I bought a street bike and uh, started stunt riding on a ZX-10 out on the streets and getting in trouble and going to jail and that lasted for a couple years and, and then uh, my dad had actually co-signed for my ZX-10 and came over to my house after my last impound and said I'm taking your keys we're selling your bike you're either gonna die or you're gonna go to jail or lose your license for the rest of your life and I said okay whatever you know well as soon as he left I was like well I pay for the bike how can I how can I keep riding the bike you know and so my wife got on internet and looked up where can we practice racing motorcycles or riding motorcycles legally and we started in Washington road racing with two fast track days and adrenaline freak track days and my first track day I was absolutely hooked and I never looked back 11 years ago and here I am now. <laughs> so, I, I gotta back up just a second. For me, I, I just, I have this addiction to wheelies anyway. It, it's something I loved doing when I was a kid and I was decent at it, but nothing like you. You you started pr doing your wheelie stuff certainly when you were doing motocross yeah. and out in the back. And so you learned balance points and got all that stuff down. And obviously you did stunt st stuff on the, on the, uh, on the streets. Yep. Um, how long before you were doing now you did track days and actually those guys they're not that bad with that on the out usually like on the outlap they'll say do what you want when you first take yeah. off yeah. did you or were you that guy who would always pull out and ride a wheelie down the no. straight and then no. drop it or? no i was the guy that showed up at uh two fast track days my first track day which was the novice wimra track day to be able to get our race license for the year and uh I showed up with a friend of mine. We were going to do the novice thing together. We sat in the back of Mark's uh, Too Fast uh, school, and we talked a bunch of shit all day, and we're the most disruptive, uh, stupid people in the class. And Mark took, made it a point to make sure that everybody knew that, and I was the <laughs> idiot. And I actually crashed out uh, uh, one of their uh, control riders. I didn't personally crash route I made a an error that I didn't know I made and unfortunately it cost her big time and she tucked the front and crashed and broke her shoulder behind me oh wow I had no idea yeah. I, I kept going finished my lap I came off and the the whole pit the whole pits were in a circle yelling at me you know and trying to kick me out of the club and and uh, it was a big deal and so that was the start of my race career <laughs> wow wow <laughs> I was the obnoxious guy with chrome wheels. Wow. So, okay, so now that you've opened that door, then you had to at some point then come back and kind of prove yourself. So yeah. you you then show back up and kind of work your way into their good graces. Yeah. Part of it, from what I see you, is likely that they obviously saw a lot of skill too. Yes. So yes. They, it's not like they didn't want you there. They just wanted you there with the right with head the right on. knowledge, right? Yeah. And, and not being, not being a, a doing stupid things, you know? Right. And, and I just didn't know. I, uh, uh, it was my probably literally like one of my first sessions of being on, tr on a road race track. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we came around turn nine at Pacific Raceways there, um, the flagger was standing on the side of the track and threw the flag and I checked up thinking, oh, do I need to pull off? Well, that was the complete wrong thing to do. And the girl that was behind me, when I checked up, she, instead of hitting me, she just checked herself up and it cost her big. Oh, every, yeah, everybody get, now you explain that and kind of, you know, we would get that. Yep. How long did you do uh, track days then before you decided that, that you wanted to go out race? You probably knew you wanted to go out race instantly, but how long did it take? I did, I got home and I looked up Washington Road Racing <laughs> and where can I start racing and this is what I'm doing and this is how I'm doing it. <laughs> you knew it, I mean, it's, yeah. For most of us, yeah, for most of us that hit the pavement, man, it's like, this is it, yep. I know this yep. is what I want to do. So, uh, so you go out right off the bat then, and then, you, so then you're not, you entered right off the bat, you're a novice. Yep. What happened the first time you went out in your first novice race? It was absolutely terrifying. I mean, I was on a 200 horsepower death trap <laughs> tank of a bike that didn't turn. I had no idea how to turn it. Um, I knew how to ride. I was a decent rider, but I just had no road race experience. I had no knowledge of dragging my knee and elbow, you know, I mean, it was just complete opposite of sticking your leg out on a dirt bike, you know, and and uh, so I, I adapted to it really quick though I had a lot of good people that helped me um, the whole incident with Monica when she crashed and hurt herself uh, Dave Nichols who was my novice mentor at the time uh, is still a really really good friend of mine took care of me throughout the whole thing kept me going kept me in the club said this guy is an outstanding guy you know we, we want him around we just need to teach him the right way you know so um, they kept me around and and here we are did, where, where was your first race again? Was it Pacific yeah, then? Pacific. So, 
D did they, when you first started riding Pacific, did they have the chute, or did you, or was it when you used to come around onto the runway no, and come right? they still had the chute. So they still had the chute. And our so first race was 2008, as a novice, 31 degrees, two inches of standing slush on the track. It snowed all day. The pits were frozen. We rode in slush and snow for my first novice race ever, and it was terrifying. They didn't cut laps. We did 10 full laps. It took us like 42 minutes. <laughs> You know, it was just crazy. I can't even. I can't even imagine riding a motorcycle around that track because you go down. You it go was, down to four, and then up there with that kind of conditions. I'd have fell down just trying to ride it, let alone. I'll never forget going through the death chute at Pacific Raceways with both my feet off the pegs. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> touching the ground to make sure that when I went through the slush, it stayed straight and I was okay. You know. So all right, so there's your first your first rain race. When did you when did you get a dry one? Then how long did it take before you finally got to hit a dry track for your first race? I think uh, I think it was the next round. I think we got some dry weather and back at Pacific again. Yeah, back at Pacific again, yeah. Okay, so now you're sitting on a 200 horsepower. I'm gonna show the world that yep. I got the fastest bike on the track, yep. even though I might not know what to do with it when I get to a corner. But, yep. Yep. And you're and you're looking at the chute. So you take off. What what? What kind of mile per hour are you hitting the shoot at with, with that 200 horsepower beast? Well, now we're, you know, 180. Yeah, I know where you are now. Now plus, mm -hmm. but back then I think I was only like, you know, maybe 120, 130, if that. Yeah, but that's but perspective here. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot different that, bike. It might have been 90, yeah. felt like 130, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's 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 a, it's been a long road. It's uh, the novice thing to me was great uh, i think by my third race my third novice race we did two at pacific and our third round was at spokane and i had never been to spokane we did an endurance race that weekend also so that was really huge for me and then uh i i graduated i graduated my novice season the sixth round of eight so I got to race the last two rounds of my first year as a as a expert. Oh, that's cool. So, and did, had you uh, made the podium in any of those races? In the novice races, I yeah. was. It was me, and I think one or two other guys that were a little bit faster me at, than me at first. But I think by the end of the the last couple rounds, I think I was winning the novice races. Okay, so yeah. you you were getting into podiums and stuff. So, yeah. what do you remember your first? podium you ever got on a street bike race remember what it was like and what did you get a third or second or first? do you remember your first one so unfortunately like i was telling you earlier as novices back in 2008 we were the low of the low and there was no podium there was no awards there was no points there was no championships you show up you pay your money you pay your dues until you're an expert and then you get to stand on the podium you know so you go through your novice now those last two races yep. you're no longer a novice nope. so now you actually get your first shot at a podium at open super sport open super bike and formula ultra so you had two races left did you um, get anywhere so close I started there dead last because mm -hmm. i had no points right. accumulated for the season right um i was a, I'm a killer motocross starter so i could start my my zx10 better than anybody on the grid at that time we had like 35 to 40 bike grids right dead last wow. i would almost whole shot the race from row eight you know and then by turn two 30 of those guys would go back by me <laughs> And then the next race, I would do the same thing. I would whole shot, and then only 25 of those guys would go by me. And then I just kept doing that. I just kept. So after, at the end of the year, I had never made a podium. Right. I think I was only, I think my best finish was like maybe a top 10, barely, if it wasn't 10th, you know. And so part of the reason I, that I want to talk through some of that too is that even though you're Superman now, you don't necessarily start out superman on the track and, and everybody who goes out and starts into this stuff realizes really quickly that you you went to a track day thinking that you knew how to ride because you rode on the street and you found out really quickly really quick. how much you didn't know yeah <laughs> and and so you have to progress through this whole thing so your second season now on the street and now you're riding in the expert class yep. so you have a shot so how long did it take you then that year before you got to a podium so in my in my second in my first expert full season um, they gridded the first round by top five finishers of the year before and then points accumulated for there so I had some points from those last two rounds of the year before so I think I got gridded like third row I was like 
probably 15th or 13th on the grid and I whole shot of the race from the third row and I mean these guys Eli Rostelong all multi number one plate holders class championships winners the fastest guys of the fast have chromie blown by him on a ZX10 like I said it only lasted for about 40 feet right but they were going wow where is this guy coming from and then I would finish 12th 13th mm -hmm. by the mid-season I was battling with all the top five top six top seven guys you wow. know and and so I made it through my my second graduated year with no crashes um, I think I don't think I ever got a podium podium I think I was like you know top five top six top seven so let's skip ahead. How long does it take you to get your first podium? Was that third season? Third maybe? season, yep. And then do you remember, same question, do you remember where, where is it a third, a second, or a first when you got the first podium? Yep, so um, my third season, I got, I still had my ZX-10, and on top of that I bought a, a 2007 Cowie 636, and that's where, where I really started to excel. I got off the big tank that didn't handle and that was just way overboard for me and went to a smaller, easier to ride bike, and that's where I really went, oh! Now I can road race. Now I can really figure out the fundamentals without trying to kill myself on this big horse, you know. Um, so I raced uh, 600 Super Sport, 600 Super Bike, 750 Super Sport, 750 Super Bike, and the same thing. I think I started with no points and I was back of the grid. I would get really good starts and be top five, top five, top five, top six, top seven. And I think by my, like my third race of, of 2010, I, I think I got a third place podium on the box. Remember that feeling still? What that was like? Well, I when do you remember standing next to Eli Edwards and Aaron Gwynn and Dan Chansey and Andy Brackett and all these guys that I looked up to so much for so long. Even though I thought I was way better than them and could smoke them, I just needed to figure out how, you know. They, those, those were all my mentors. Those were the guys I really looked up to, you know. And, and uh, so it was really cool to be able to stand on the podium with them and I'll, I'll never forget my first my biggest uh, accomplishment and my biggest memory of road racing is beating Eli Edwards for the first time he's a uh, you know four or five time plate holder at Washington when I started road racing he was him and Ross along were the guys those those were the guy those were the chromies you know those were the guys that we were all like man they're 15 seconds a lap faster than us how do you do that you know yeah. and uh, so by that by the end of my third season um, I had sold the ZX10 I got rid of the Cowie, I bought a brand new R6, um, went out on the R6 and followed Eli around for like two seasons. It took me to finally catch up to him and be able to pace him and figure out why he was so much better than all of us. As soon as I figured it out, I finally beat him and I stood on the top, top step of the podium. The last round of 2012 was my first win on a 600. Pretty cool. So four years in, it took me to win. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I, the one thing I did skip over, which is intimate to me because I just, I, of course I have to tell everybody I got my first knee drag here a month ago. I always tell everybody that, yeah. but, uh, we, it's kind of our, our, where we measure the bar, a bar in accomplishments when we're doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm guessing that your first knee down was probably long before you ever got to a track. You probably did it on the street oh, yeah. somewhere. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> Jeans. Yeah. So I can't say knee down. Yeah, it was on turn. Th it was just on a street, yeah. going around a corner and drug yeah. my knee. Yeah. In the dirt and the sand. <laughs> so really not a big deal for you. By the time you went to the track, it was all that was something very you were used to all that kind of stuff. Yes and no. My my first couple of years, I mean I, I could get my knee down and, and, and had some okay body position, but there was not much knee drag. <laughs> Those big, big horsepower bikes. Oh, I'm yeah. trying to wrestle that thing around, but I think at that time I was only like 125 pounds, right? <laughs> so, still a teeny. I'm, I'm only 140 pounds now, but um, I was a teeny little dude on a big freaking crazy bike, and it took me a long time to be able to get the lean angle and the geometry and the ch chassis and all the fundamentals figured out to where I could really drag my knee and lean angle, right? So what would you say to uh, the kids that are coming up and, and uh, you know, somebody's asking you, hey, how do I get my kid into this and what, you know, what would you say to encourage them to, to come and do it? That's a tough one. There's two sides to that. Well, what I tell everybody and I, with my schools, with all the teaching and coaching and everything I do is, is seat time is everything, period. If you're not out here riding, you're not getting better, you're not going faster, period. Um, this sport takes 150% dedication, period. It takes 150% of every dollar you have, period. 
And if you can get through all those things and still have your wife and kids or your significant other through it all, you're doing really good. So stick with it. Um, be motivated. Don't get discouraged. Keep your head up. We all crash. We all destroy our stuff. If you can afford it and have help and can stay in the game, then just keep pushing forward because it's all about seat time. It's all about learning how to progress and go forward. And they too someday could be close to Chromie. Yeah. <laughs> really, for me, it's been 11 seasons of 100% dedication. Right? I train hard. I work hard so I can be here. I take care of my family so I can be here. I make sure all my my ducks are in a row so I can be at the track. On top of that, my fitness, all my you know my health, everything. I try to just be I be the best you can for this because if you want to go fast and be the guy, you have to be the guy. You know? So you're hearing it from the the top dude around. Go get on the track. Yep. Go do a track Go day. Ride. Get on. Get started. And come out and play with us. And so. there is nothing like this. Um, you get on a big bike. You do 190 miles an hour here at Portland International, and there's just nothing like it. I've skydived. I've jumped out of airplanes. I've done every cliff jump and flip and crazy thing you can do in life. And there is nothing that compares to riding a leader bike on the front straightaway out here. It's just it, there's nothing that compares. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ryan. Yep. Thank you. We'll guys. see you guys next time. Yep.